Do you mind? I'm not going to turn on my camera for the moment. That's okay. I'm not, uh, I'm not decent. <laughs> well, that's fine. The audio is good enough. Wait, you, I can see you. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'll be decent as soon as I realize I'm not sick anymore. That's okay. But if, I, if I don't, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, what do you call it? A spiritual bet. I've been looking forward to talking to you for four days, and now I get so sick I can't even get to the phone. Screw you, devil. <laughs> I'm going to push through and try to have this conversation, and then maybe... Yeah, you feel like something is um, against you? I shouldn't, but I don't understand why. Yesterday I was able to eat for the first time. I was able to eat some good food. And today I just can't handle anything right now. I'm dealing with a kidney infection. Right, yeah, you said that. Yeah, I'm not um, for antibiotics, to be honest. Well, just knowing the fact that this could be bad, and I had them. How long have you had problem? Hmm. I noticed in the middle of the summer, I was having some things that were symptoms. And right. uh, I asked a friend from work, she didn't need, excuse me, antibiotics. She did. I took them. I took them for two days. I felt better. I stopped taking them. Right. Like a stupid. Ah. <laughs> uh, that was about maybe five, four or five months ago. So it's come, so it's come back. back. Yeah, it's come back with quite a vengeance because this time it gave me fever. So I'm taking it proper, you know, I'm taking the medicine like I'm supposed to, and I'm taking ginger and apple cider vinegar, la 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 la, I'm doing all the naturals as well. Yeah, well that's good, yeah. Well, the one thing that I'm not liking too much is the fact that my marijuana is so fucking weak, excuse my language, <laughs> but it, it is so weak, I can't even hardly use it for the benefit of eating. Alright, what have you got? <laughs> I still, huh? What, um, what, what was, what, you mean just the, the, the cannabis you got most recently? Yes, it's just very, very weak. Do you take the leaves out? Yeah, even, yeah. Some because I've noticed sometimes sometimes the leaves cause a down effect, and obviously if you if the bud is causing a high effect, then the the two together kind of cancel it out. So and sometimes the leaves are fine. E even the little leaves in the bud can can do it. In Africa, I... they always take them out. They take every sign of leaf out, but obviously they can afford to because. <laughs> yeah. So what I'll do, like for me, the latest batch I've had, the leaves are having quite a strong effect. So I take them out, and then when I've run out of bud, I'll smoke them. And then I think once they've dried out a bit more, they they don't seem so bad. But so I, I did notice, like the first time I got this batch, I put you know just normally putting everything in, and um, found. Yeah, you know, didn't have a good effect. It was almost a negative effect. Okay. <laughs> Let me, uh... But I don't know what you get. No. I don't know what you get over there. It's probably not the same thing. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just... Just, just weak shit. But do you... Also, because, you know, you sort of... Um, it takes 10 days to kind of come off the cannabis... So if you smoke a joint day one, you know, and then you're high for 10 days from that joint. Who says? Well, that's, that's my own sort of findings. When I've, when I've stopped oh. cannabis, when I've, stopped, when I've had a gap, <laughs> you know, it takes about 10 days for the effects to fully wear off. Oh, there oh. you are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm decent now. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. I just got out of the bathtub. To me, gosh, hot bath is mother's milk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've actually had a bath as well, so... When I'm sick, yeah. 
Yeah. Hi. Ex-husband might be calling. Okay. My life is not mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. So, yeah. I, so. I have watched a lot of your videos, so I haven't formed any real preconceived notions. So I have no agenda. You know, except for to just ask questions that always bother me. Or not bother me, but just things. Yeah. But I don't have questions at the moment. I go by flow. Yeah, no, well, that's good. I agree with that. Yeah, because, will help. you know, <laughs> things, yeah, whatever comes up, comes up, and you try right. and control it, and it will just make it worse, usually. Right, because you end up babbling about nothing. Possibly. No. <laughs> so who's going to go first? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> I was going to ask you where you're from. I well, know London, no, England, but not London. So yeah, where are you from? No, so it's about an hour away from London, towards Birmingham. There's a motorway which joins them both. You're not anywhere near Pres um, Preston, are you? Preston, no. Preston's up f much further north. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in what in an area... You do know, have you heard of Oxford? Yeah. Sort of 20 miles north of Oxford, in a sort of that's, a market town that's where i can i can understand the english but when you come from preston oh god oh star you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's almost scottish oh, you know, you know, you know, what <laughs> <laughs> told you <laughs> okay feeling a little better. I, I made a mistake and drank milk and the milk said no. And I just got over that. But I don't want to move around too much or anything. And then sip some water and hopefully that'll help put things to right. Yeah. Huh? Uh. Oh, well, I just know that she was um, greatly upset when I went there, but I did not know of that, of anything, of anything. I just went to bring that jacket over because I was feeling good enough to do it. I was feeling well enough to take the jacket over. So I did. And then I'd seen that she'd been upset. I sat for with her for a little while. I know. I can't really talk about it. I'm on a Skype call. You know, I set up a, I set up a talking time with somebody, and that time is now, and that's what I'm doing. I'd like, I'd like you to let me go. I can't really stop it right now. Excuse me? I know Zypher needs picked up. Besides, your, your cell phone's breaking up anyway. Alright, bye. Sorry? Thanks. <laughs> My ex husband is a sociopath. What does that mean exactly? Sociopath is a person with no empathy, uh, manipulative. He's got a narcissist. You know what a narcissist is? Right. So is he like that with everyone or just you? No, he's like that with everybody. And he thinks he knows everything. And he will destroy people's minds. He got this girl. This girl is a lesbian. This girl is a lesbian. And he managed to convince her somehow to move in with him. And, well, she thinks in her mind, I'm going to take advantage of the situation and get a change for myself. But she was honest enough to say to him, look, you know what I am, this might not work. So after, 
And then she ends up bringing her girlfriend with her, which means the girlfriend's Oops. nothing more than a shield. You know? Put somebody between the man and you, and you don't have to have a relationship. <laughs> so this, this tension has been going on for six months. It finally blew up, and he's trying to ask me which way to spin. How do I spin it? Is she trying to have a relationship? What do I do? What do I do? And I'm like, I now see you in such a different light. That I, mm. I don't know you. I despise you. Like, your character. Who the hell are you? Yeah. Well, I wish he'll leave me alone next time when he dupes a young lady. Because these ones had me for a friend, for an outlet, for somebody to help him through. And I was still loyal to him. Because I still thought he might be redeemable. Might be redeemable if he could find somebody who could care for him. It's not going to be you, then. Playing such a game that he doesn't care about being cared for anyway. How, how long have you been split up? Oh, we've been split up for seven years, but we've been married for 18 before that. And every, in, in our lives as friends, because he thinks we're great friends. Maybe we were. Maybe we were. But I can't. I don't respect him. I haven't respected him for quite a while. And I only keep him around because he pays my rent. Uh. But I'm not free. I'm still a victim. Yeah. You know, he, I've been an abused wife my whole life. Didn't really realize it. And now I do, and I'm not free yet. And no, no kids. Oh yeah, we have two children. The so grown up. Son, right. Twenty three year old girl. Right. The twenty two year old daughter. And so, kind of, he's been paying you rent because you were bringing up the kids. restructure my budget I'll be able to I, I hope that I'll be able to pay our own rent then I can take his money as long as he gives it to us and keep it in savings <coughs> but I want to keep his good graces but I don't want to support him but all I really want to do is evil yeah that 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 could make you ill because like I I, I don't no, I know, but it's hard. But when I broke up with my ex, like I found myself really hating her, imagining in strangling her and stuff. Oh, no, yeah, I know better. <laughs> <laughs> but that that caused a, a, a real problem with me, and I had I had this sort of sickness. You know, I didn't go to a doctor with it. You know, it might even have been cancer. But I realised it was the hate. Yeah. You know, and and I just sort of. I managed to sort of forgive her just by sort of, you know, just by not being so negative about all my thoughts about her. And then our our relationship improved and, you know, because we, we used to fight, you know, over the my son and stuff. But yeah, it's all, it's all since improved since then and I don't worry about it. And so, yeah, it could, you know, it could be that sort of, Hate is hurting yourself because, oh, I, on a soul level, it must be, but it's recently aroused because of all the drama that's happening and the way I. Well, I guess with her, you know, you're not really liking the idea of what he's doing and stuff, but you've kind, you kind, you kind of just got to concentrate on your own life, really. There's, you know, when yeah. you, you want someone else to do something, but. And what helps is if you think that, you know, we're all children of God. So if you're worried about your children, you can actually think, well, actually, God is looking after them just as much as he's looking after me and anyone else. And then you can kind of take, take a load off and think, you know, I, perhaps I can't, you know, I often say, you know, do what you can do and leave the rest to God. Yeah. I um I don't quite know what my function is in my life, like spiritually or anything. But I do know one thing. It seems to be a running theme that when I'm fuck when I'm messed with, when somebody messes with me, I don't go. I don't do vengeance. But something happens. I don't believe in vengeance and if I feel vengeance I have to 
seriously look into all the angles of of my motive. I mean, I have a spirit guide, okay? You have a spirit guide. She's my mother. Like, when I was younger, they were mother and father, and I grew up, and I went out of their jurisdiction as parents, and they became royalty, but I kept one, and she became my wife. Does that make sense? I don't know. She is my same, she is the same function as my childhood imaginary friends were. The function of guidance, comfort, no, you know, teaching, knowledge. So I dialogue through her, and I don't take any actions unless I've been scrutinized and judged. And if I'm pure, then we'll talk about what needs to be done. What is justice? What is the correct action? Most of the time, uh, not most of the time, but lots of times, when I, when I filter and clean and judge, build, whatever, whatever I'm doing, because I'm not trained in anything, I'm just a natural student, um, it condenses into, oh, well, I can let that go, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just strange how different circumstances have come in my life. And yesterday, when I was seeing the state of mind that he put her in, and fully realizing that he's playing on her the same game I endured, realizing his weakness and all of that, yeah, I had an evil thought of, Boy, doesn't he sound like a tin, tin, tin can. And if his friends could hear him like that, he would not have anyone. Who is at the door? Excuse me. What are you doing home so early? Oh, got a story? Huh? My daughter's got a story. Okay. What happened? I'm on the phone to England right now with a new, new person. <laughs> My new person. Hello. Hi, daughter. <laughs> well, anyway, so, um, because McDonald's is remodeling and they were doing the bathroom, they got this huge saw and they cut our power. Right. Oh, so you had it closed. Yeah. All right. I mean, we still have light. We just, our registers, our power, our pumps. Can't do anything. Our power is out. Yeah, then you gotta reboot everything when it does come back. Oh up. yeah. So, Donna sent me home. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Could you get my door then? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I had a person, a friend from England, a couple years ago, got me started on the path. Hold on. Got it. Yep. I'm sure you haven't heard of him. But it's worth asking. He's from Preston. Um, and there's a town near there. begins with an N, I think. Okay. I don't know. I'd there's have to look on a map. I'm not... Oh, forget that. I don't, I don't know, know where exactly where it is. I have a mental map of England in my head because of all the different <clears throat> people, you know, right. that, I, that I've met. <laughs> have you ever heard of this kid, this guy who calls himself Haruka? No. Oh, Okay. No, he tried to get me started. And when you say the path, what what was the path? The path, spiritual path, the yeah. journey. Um, you can look at it as the hero's journey, you know, Christ's journey. The spiritual path to where you, you know. But you need the truth first, don't you? Huh? You need the truth. Well, I need confirmation. See, when I study teachers all over the world, ancient scriptures, this, that, and the third. When I study it, I'm not learning it. I go, oh, that's right. I figured that out. Yeah, because it, it, conf <laughs> it confirms a belief you already had. It gives a name to what I've already experienced. Yeah, well, I think we're probably born pretty close. We're born pretty close sort of knowing the truth. Or in, in, in the womb. I think, um, but... If you're ever going to communicate it with someone or, you know, philosophize on it, you kind of need, a, yeah, you need a, a bit of understanding, don't you? A language. 
Well, yeah, that's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Just words. Gosh. I think I'm going to pioneer a new art. You ever see Atlantis Morissette? Well, I've, I've heard her songs. But you've never seen her sing? No. This woman sings with her eyes. Okay. I, I bet you that she could lip sync a song, not move her lips, but I bet you, you'll swear to God, she was singing with her mouth. I'm going to pie, I'd like to pioneer that kind of art. <laughs> Miming. Lip miming or sync miming. It's a mime. <laughs> All right, well, how would you, how would you um, kind of explain, you know, what we are and what the universe is mm. and what God is with a mime? <laughs> well, I'm just saying it's an art form. It's just a way of expressing music. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, that's the difference between us and the animals, isn't it? That we have words. I mean, dolphins communicate with bleeps and whales, and they 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 communicate, and um, baboons flap open their eyelids or whatever. But until you've got words, you know, it's like making sense of something. You know, you must have had an enlightenment point where uh, a few words has just made so much sense to you that it's that it's felt you felt something because what the words connotated <laughs> sort of thing I don't try to explain these things but what about if you have a feeling and you're making sense of this feeling for yourself you know is it good or bad uh, and obviously it has, you know, there are deeper things in feelings. So, because I find sometimes I get a feeling and then some words will come in with it. So, yeah. you know, I believe I've, I've felt the sadness in my soul and let it go through me and I dealt with something. And you could... And, you... and so I had a feeling and the word that came with it was sadness. Okay. So, you know, yeah. so, so then I can then I can make then I can sort of make a bit more sense of it, and I can also communicate that to somebody else. Yeah. So what what's your experience of feeling? Your I mean, do you believe you have a soul, an eternal being that you'll carry on after life after death? <laughs> And I think um, in a lot of aspects, there are so many descriptions that can describe what this is, what I am. On one hand, I, you, it, reality, everything that has ever been from every time, forward, forever, for whatever, is God in one single moment going, what if we are that thought happening? Every ramification of that thought happening, you know? We are, you are, that path of the what if question that God just asked five seconds ago. If the answers had only your experience, right? I'm, I, God asked, what if, and I'm the expression of the equation of what it would be if I had only the experience I have coming to this conclusion. Basically, at the end of the Big Bang, we're all going to pop into this one thing. Boom. It's all an illusion. I'm infinite awareness. Hello. Do you we're think right. we're all one? Yeah. So you don't... All the mind of God happening. That's one way. Another way to see it is, I don't know. Well, Once what, we die, what? we lose this film that we call reality. Where do we go? Into this void of infinite nowness. So, yeah, because I used to believe this, that almost like at the end of my life, or my life has been, a, I've been a drop from the ocean. And at the end of my life, this drop will go back into the ocean. I have a problem. 
That's what I used to believe. I don't anymore. I like to keep me. See, I don't want to be you. No. I would like, in my fantasy of if I could have my own heaven, what would it be like? It's a world like ours, and I get to turn on a TV, and I get to watch on TV the story of your life with all of your intricacies, but they're not mine. Yeah. I can move on from there and experience the love and the affection, the under the knowledge to experience all that has been through you and through him and through him and through the, you know, I would like to be able to study what has been reality and benefit knowledge or benefit and understanding. <coughs> like heaven, <coughs> I'm in the aha moment of a scholar in his perfect uh, university, <laughs> you know. See, no, well, is, you. I think you will be able to do that. My conscience, as I am, the thing seen through my eyes. Yeah. This is who I want to be forever. You will be. I can't <laughs> be. How can I be when you have the right to be the same thing? <laughs> no, but yes, but that's because your belief about we're all being one isn't quite right. Exactly. It's what I'm saying. We are all one. But you know what? You know what else I'd like? We're all I'd connected, like, but we're I'd not like all one. See, see how you would perceive all the things that I just watched on TV about that guy. You know, I want to share knowledge. And I think God is simply that. Knowledge. God, is, God, God, God is also a thing. Yeah, God is a being, an entity. And, and maybe we're, we're just children. We maybe are. Just That's the home. truth. That's the truth. And the good thing about truth and the way God has made it is you can feel what is true and what isn't so if you take on that belief for half an hour that God is our mother and father and we're all God's children it comes to a night in no you we're all different unique we're right at the beginning of our existence we're in we're in like the womb of God this is just the beginning. This is why it's so fucked up. I mean, wouldn't you rather have the crap at the beginning so that you can have all the good afterwards? We get through the hard first, the hard stuff first. Yeah, wouldn't you prefer <laughs> it that way? You know, I know I would. All I want is a world where people are honest. That that would be good, and it's very rare at the moment. I don't know if I believe the religions when they say, well. In the golden era before the Kali Yuga, and I'm like, no, were we ever good and gracious? Look all the way back to Confucius. Confucius was my first master. Before Christ, 800 years before Christ. Did he find goodness? Did he find a golden age? Of course not. No, well, the, th the thing is, if you go back in history, you'll see they were more and more enlightened the further you go back. Because corruption hadn't found a way yet. Because corruption it's 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 true that we've only been here six thousand years. We didn't we didn't <laughs> evolve from monkeys. It's hard. That's a hard truth to take on. I don't if, care. Hey, look, <laughs> just think about it over the next few months or whatever. It takes a while, but you'll start to see. Oh my gosh, we've only been here six thousand years. I don't think so. No, I, I know you that. don't because it's. Everybody else believes this, you know, we evolved from a monkey, you know, we're swinging through the trees and then we started making tools and throwing javelins and then we started talking. It's bollocks. God made us. <laughs> right. Well, some people say there were seven different types of humans, humanoids. So basically, we are a form of life, just like the cow, the donkey and the horse, you know, um, whatever, because... There were seven of us. There were seven kinds of us. We killed each other off. We interbred. There's only one left. <laughs> <laughs> they tell a lot of bullshit about the, uh, you know, the scientific community. I do not trust archaeologists, not very much at all. I think there's a lot of anomalies. Anomalies? Yeah. To be able to say they've got a straight story, because they don't. No. I, I kind of believe Earth has risen and fallen, or risen and fallen. But anyway, whatever it is, we are, we're here, aren't we? Here we are. Right. <laughs>
So we do exist. But I don't, see, I don't believe animals have a soul. Oh. But it's, it's actually, don't take it the wrong way, it's what I believe is actually really good. I actually believe that what the personality you see in every animal is God. There was this one time before I had a really, <laughs> I think my, one of, uh, well, it was the first time, it was like the first real awakening meditation that I had. And I was feeling all happy, happy on some super good weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I've always been a seeker, a spiritual person, but I'm sitting there and I'm loving my cat and I connected with him, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we're just in this little moment. And I said, teach me to talk to animals. And whoosh! <laughs> 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 Something happened. And um, went into a nice, just a meditation of emotion it wasn't verbal and well being a human right i see how simple his mind is so the things he's showing me are so simple that it was easy to learn how to talk to animals <laughs> <laughs> and now i can see it i can see spirit life force something in, a, in some animals i look in their eyes i look at a lizard he looks back at me and our eyes do this yeah reality thing yeah, yeah. and i'm like you're real mm -hmm. I, die. you know <laughs> i'm done yeah. with spiders <laughs> yeah i do and you know i've um since i've felt this i've let a mosquito bite me and it wasn't pain it did <laughs> It didn't even leave a mark. It didn't even leave a mark. I thought, I can give you a drop of blood, because I believe all animals are God, so I thought, well, if that's God doing it, there's a, there's a reason. And yes, I could think, oh, I could catch malaria, but hey, maybe I could get some sort of good antibody that I haven't got that will help me. And believe in it's God, I've let ladybirds, ladybirds twice they've done this, like they do this little scratching and biting almost, and I've let that happen, you know, I just let it happen. And believing that they're all God has, has really helped as well. I like it. You know, and this is the good thing about truth. If it gives you a good feeling, because the truth is, is that the truth is wonderful. And the truth is also personally revealed. Well, yes. Yeah, so, it speaks your language to you. Yeah, and, and you and you can learn from it, you can know, you know, you get a good feeling, this is true. But it has to be the right feeling, it's, you know, it's inside of you. I can never take on that practice because then it would become a lie. Because for me, it's only true when it's true. When I have that connection with that lizard, then I know he's conscious and I know what he wants. So I can go let him do what he needs. I don't know if I've got the soul to be able to let a mosquito bite me but I got the soul to say this is my space leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> no I mean you might we don't I don't get many mosquitoes where I live if maybe it'd be different if I lived somewhere where there were lots but oh our mosquito season has been pretty good this year good as in not many you're right this year has been really decent last year it was terrible but I guess they're trying to kill the Zika virus, so they're trying to kill the mosquitoes off. What, are you in there? Are you, yeah, whereabouts are you then in America? South Carolina. Okay. So that is that just above Florida, or is there something in yeah, between? Well, it's a state. There's a, there's a state between us. There's about 300 miles between us and Florida. Yeah. I've been, I've been to America once a um, couple of years ago, and... Um, around the Washington D.C. area. Oh, what a horrible place to see. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. That's where my friend lives. Anyway, he's a, he's a horse trainer, so it's a oh. horsey area. You probably saw, saw some greenery then. Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, I did, I did. And I, I saw, I went into a, a museum in, in Washington which had uh, different rooms of houses, like, I don't know, Two three hundred years ago, or however long, a different oh, from different it. states from different states. No, that's all quite interesting. I've never been in 
That's fair enough. I don't go to museums in London either, so, you know. <laughs> Did you? I look at London, I look at England and go, oh my God, the history there, the thousands and thousands of years, the whole place is a graveyard. <laughs> oh. You know, I, I would probably have a psychic overload. <laughs> yeah, and I know that America, everything's much more spaced out. There's, you see, we're a bit cramped on this island. It's cramped. Wasn't it? I heard that in the in World War Two, when the war machine was going, you had all your stuff on the island getting ready to go off. I heard that the island was sinking on that side. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they got their war machine worked up. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Obscure little fact in the back of the head. I don't know how true it is. No. So, um, have you ever, you have never heard of this A.J. Miller guy? Uh. Or have you? Well, I don't know. If he's the one that they, that the Vice did a video on, of this guy with long hair in this community, but I thought that guy was in Canada. No. So, that... I thought it was him, but I don't think it is. I think this A.J. Miller is a different person than what I thought I had seen before. And I started listening to him. And it just didn't strike any single chord at all. What, but yeah, he, what did you listen to? Uh, what was he talking about? Was it his recent ones? Well, I can't be sure. I think he was talking about soulmates, though. Okay. He had a circle drawn on the whiteboard, these, these several circles. And words going in, and I forget what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd recommend, like, there's if you look back to sort of what, 2008, 2009, and where he's doing these, he's just talking basically the whole time. And there's one called Secrets of the Universe. And that's, see, he's the one who's brought out this truth about God is a being, male and female. You know, and like for me, because I, I'd kind of lost it for a bit, and then it was yeah about two years ago. Seeing somebody else say that and be so sure about it, suddenly clicked with me. You know, and I sort of connected to how I'd used to think about God, but then the mother God was a bit new. You know, that God is mother and um, male and female. And the soulmates thing, I'd never thought about the soulmates thing before. But that, when I, that suddenly clicked with me as well and I could, I could feel it. And I could feel like, that's why we always have a yearning for a companion. You know, whenever I thought about living forever before, it sort of scared me for a bit thinking, you know, but knowing that there's another half of me, made that feel awesome. I don't know how that could be. Like, for me personally, I'm such an odd creature, you know? Um, that person who would be your soulmate would have to be somebody that you can accept and that can accept every part of you as well, that can understand. Well, they, they would, they would. And, you know, because they're essentially... But Event eventually you'll be one consciousness with your soulmate. You you and your soulmate on a soul level are actually the same person, the same ch child of God. The only problem with that is, is I have a lot of self-loathing, so it wouldn't be bad to get the one who hates me the most. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the thing. If you know, if you do that, if you do that, then you're going to keep your soulmate away from you. Yeah, hey, I try not to. Your soulmate's probably doing the same thing, hating themselves. Right. <laughs> you know, we right. got if well. you if you can't love yourself, you can't or you almost can't let anyone else love you. I don't want nobody else to love me because he's ruined that. No, but you want your daughter to love you, don't you? You want God to love you. Well, that's easy. I mean, God that's does easy. God does love you, but it, to that's the easy bit. To feel it, you've got to you've got to love yourself. And if you knew the truth, you would love yourself. 
If you're not loving yourself, it's because you believe something false. I know that. Uh... The truth is the foundation of love. The truth is the most important thing. Get the truth first. And, you, you know, it takes a while. You have to kind of be open-minded. Try out a new belief. Just say to yourself, I'm just going to try this for half an hour. You know, and then after half an hour, you might think, actually, I'll try it for a couple of days. And see what effects it has. The truth will set you free. <laughs> Coughing is good, it cleans the lungs. What's that? Coughing is good, it cleans the lungs. I believe that illusion. <laughs> Maybe it's not an illusion though. Maybe it's the I truth. Don't know. Everything do you is know good. do you know what wiped out plague? Do you know smoking tobacco wiped out plague? Plague was a massive problem in England. Every every few years there'd be a bout of plague and lots of people would die. And then tobacco was being brought over from South America. And they noticed, you know, plague wasn't as bad. They were telling children to smoke. And then with TB, more recently, if you had TB in the hospitals, they were given a full-strength Captain Stig cigarette to smoke to cough the shit off their lungs. I mean, I've, I've had some coughs in my life. <laughs> you know, yeah, right? But, you know, and I've had coughs sometimes that hurt, but, you know, sometimes you have a cough that just, cleans you up, you know, you grab the phlegm, it's, it's the, you know, this pollution these days, and they're saying how these micro particles are getting into the lungs, they say they're even going up into the brain, but if you've got a layer of tar on your lungs, <laughs> th they can't get in so deep, can't they? And what, why is it in this country, they banned smoking from pubs years ago, no one goes out anymore <laughs> and lots of people are giving up loads of people who have given up smoking get ill they get ill after they've given up there's such but there's such a social thing you know anti-smoking it's on all the packets they're so against it but people are still getting cancer like there's no tomorrow yeah there's so much deception in the world you can't true I, I mean, yeah. And from what we were they, just saying... Take, exactly why would they take cigarettes away? Well, if the government does nothing but lie, why exactly would they do this? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a anything you can have too much, obviously. Obviously. And sometimes, you know, you smoke a fag when you didn't even really want one. It's, that's just stupid as well. But, no, there's definitely... It's not as bad as they make out. If it's the, it's the thing that got rid of plague, we'd all be dead by now, probably. Right, so you're going to inspire me to talk like this for the rest of the day? Say, like it. say it again. Then, what? Say it again. I said, right, now you've inspired me to talk like this for the rest of the day. Are you going to talk English? Because I love it. I'm going to talk American. <laughs> oh, you can try, man. It makes cat. I don't know what no, area I'm from. No, listen, no British person can do an American accent um, justice, all right? Because I can't. I'm an American and I can't do English, so there. Yeah, but you are doing English. If you listen, I'm mixing up all kinds of areas. <laughs> Yeah, I like accents are good. They're good. <laughs> I love it. I fooled an Irishman. <laughs> you did what to an Irishman? I fooled an Irishman. Oh, oh fool. I was from London. <laughs> oh, right. Very good. <laughs> your 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 name, McCain. Is it what's your surname? McCullen. No, this is my spiritual name, I guess. Is that your married name, McCullen? No, no, no. This is not even my 
legal name. Uh, okay, so you just made this up. Uh, yeah, I made it up. Okay. I've, I've, held, I've held the name unto myself since I was 13. Oh, really? And my, my spirit guides came to me, and I felt myself adopted, and now I'm, I'm a Cullen. You know, Linnell's my mother, James is my father, and I'm a, I'm a princess. Yeah. <laughs> but we live in private. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's, I had a nice fancy. I had a dull life. I had an abusive life. So I, I, I retreated into my own parents. In fact, I invented my imaginary parents when I was eight, probably when I was six. Okay. And I... Every night I would talk with my mom and dad. So, I, I mean, I believe then that they are real. That they're just spirits. They, they, they are spirits who once lived on this earth and now they're in the spirit world. But they have different forms. Well, I suppose, what do you mean different forms? They can have, like, different bodies? I have felt the one I'd call father, yeah, dad. Yeah. I have felt him as dad. I have felt him as judge, and I have felt him as teacher. Okay, so you look to him for more than one thing. Right. Yeah. So I kind of associate. I wouldn't say that he is God, but I know that he has acted in the office of. So I think, if anything, he's an angel. But he, he'll never claim he's God. But when I felt the presence of God, and the presence had form enough to have a voice, to have conversation, it was my father in his ultimate form. In his over form. Okay, but... So, if you... this Again, obviously, so everything that you believe about the truth of it affects... You know, because you want to make sense of it. So you're making sense of it with your belief system about what we are and what everything is. So if we go back to the, you know, God being mother and dad, and we're all being the children, then this this person you're, you're, you're communicating with, you may see him as a father figure and a teacher, but he he too is a child of God. But he might just have a lot more, he learnt a lot more, than most people, because he's been around longer. Well, I don't know. I, I put him... Like you say, he would never call himself God, so he knows that he's a child of God. But he would call himself king. Would he? If he needed to. Has he ever needed to? No. I've never seen his judgment... You know, like that. What's his name? James. James Alexander McCullen. Okay. And um, so, there you go. You've got... He probably... Have you checked? Ask. Have you checked? Yeah. Have you checked, like, his life yeah. when he was on Earth? No. I mean, there's not that many McCullens. Do you know when... I mean, are you he able... Are you, me, but I get the feeling he died... I, when I was younger, I got different information. Yeah. And neither one of them told me too much. Because they went from, they became spirit guides at the time when mysticism and spiritism and all that was kind of cool in the mid-90s, early 90s. And I was a spirit medium. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I had a experience where I thought I, like, Linnell was supposed to be from Tennessee, and her name was Elizabeth Anderson, but she led me to believe that she had died in, in a modern age because it was a hospital. I saw it through her own eyes, like I saw her death through her eyes. Yeah. And she was reaching for some medicine in a hospital room, in a table. And that's when that's whenever she claims that she died. And I, I guess it was the 60s. I don't know. 40s. I don't know. Vague, vague memory. doesn't even matter. Because I've already come to the realization that everything given to you is just a 
you know, <laughs> the lie to get you somewhere to learn something. It's not a lie, though. Why is it a lie? I don't know. Because I don't know anything, because there's never been any real confirmation about my personal experiences, so I can sit here in a different frame of mind and tell you that basically I'm probably just psychotic and mixed up. And yeah, but we're not... I think there is a thing where, you know, they're not allowed to just give us the answers. Yeah. Because and you have to learn, you have to learn it for yourself. So if you like, you know, I think there's and a... At this time, they were, they were not, they did not, maybe the reason why I got such vague information or little information at all is because they really didn't want me to go looking for them like bodies and get wrapped up in that. In fact, when I started learning to read tarot cards, I kept getting told to not do it. Don't do it so much. No, yeah. you just back off. You need to depend on yourself. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I would get lessons to try to curb me from it, but then at the same time, they'd leave me alone with it. Yeah. And one time I'd gotten really sick about it. Then he stepped in and he said, so, are you finished with this shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but because that's how good, that's how a good, you know, if you like good parents, and I'm not sure there's many people who are really good parents, but that's how, you know, a better parent does it. And, you know, we could, it's the way God does it as well. When, you, when you're doing what God, you know, would advise against, if you like, God would just ignore you. Or, you know, in fact, you close it off yourself, but... God would never, like, smack anyone's bum or, you know, God is always loving, all loving. And, I, and if no, they're, no, they're learning from God, so that's how they're, they're lacked as well. But how old do you think this McCullen is? Because I get a feeling he's a bit older. Oh, uh, my last impression was, like, um, mid-1800s. Yeah. Yeah. Because both times you, you spoke about both of those, I've had a feeling from both of them. Hold on. Guess what? Oh, gosh. <sighs> oh, excuse me. That's all right. Hello. It's okay, it's a bad camera. We all look like shit. <laughs> okay, what yeah, you probably can't even see me properly. I'm I'm a silhouette. Yeah. What you got some better than I got? Because I got some. Well, there's nothing proper about me. What you call it? The shit that will make you high? It won't. It will get you okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. I often found it's not also, you know, it's what you think about. It's, it's, not, it's, it's what you do, it's what you do when you smoke as well. It, you know, I like to sit and do nothing and let what happens happen. But it's uh, also, but then it's what I think about, you know, and what's on my mind and... And then I, and then I go out of my mind and I'm sort of feeling. I'm just sitting there feeling and, that, and that's the best thing. Hi, right, carry on. Get out. Oh. Get out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. I just don't want to hang on yeah, and quit. So anyway, I um, come over here last night looking for a damn yeah, got that tattoo. Oh, yeah. Looking for a freaking lamp or something to put outside. There's no lights out on my, there's no overhead light outside. Each campsite has a big ass, like, from the electric company. You know what I mean? Mine's right. the only one that's dark. And I was like, oh, scared. Or Athena's like, oh, well, mom went to sew. I was like, never mind. She literally starts, 
I've got a candle. I got a flashlight. I'm like, oh my god, girl, bam. No, no, no. I need. And so I need to go to Walmart and get like one of those um, big aluminum things that have the clamp and just put a light bulb in it. You know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. She she wanted to to um, maybe later like I'll give you some gas money and stuff. Run up there and and get it. Must try one real fucking hot. Is this crazy, stupid shit yeah. here? Um, whatever I do. I look all like, yeah, I'm really focused. I'm gonna listen. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to finish your, like, whatever you need to say before yeah. you can relax. I, this is, I'm just <laughs> relaxed, sweetie. On drugs, off of drugs, coming off of drugs, haven't done drugs in six months. This is just how I am. So we were just talking about, um... God. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if she wants to share it with you. <laughs> no, I love God. Okay, we just, it's, it's, a, it's a pillow. A pillow. <laughs> that is several different kinds of resin. Well, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it has like that what is soap or something. Like, what no, I, I've been, last two weeks, been making that up with different kind of weed. Girl, I've got, kind of got like, I've got some money. Let's go get some. I'm kidding. Fuck this. Okay, well, that'll have to be later. It has to be before dark because I have no lights on the car and I got pulled over last night. Can you handle that? It's got a weird taste to it. You are so not dedicated. <laughs> no, it's spoiled. Oh, God. Oh, ooh, that would have hurt. I know. What are her so, so much? So what part of London? Where where are you, London? Uh, about an hour from London, north. Where? Um, Banbury, the town is. Uh, are you familiar with uh, uh, Devonshire? D Devon, yeah, it's a nice place to go on holiday. Go to the beach in Devon. I was there a few months ago. Very nice, okay. Devon. Yeah. I don't know where it is. My mother supposedly took a trip. Um, but from my understanding, she lied about where she went, and she just went to, like, Maine and fuck come down. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, I, she goes through the whole process of getting a passport, and from my understanding, never left the country. But who knows? You, you just wanted to make sure that Devon was a place. I did. I, I, I wanted to make sure that Devon was a place. Well, yes, it is a county, but it's not actually called Devonshire. So, so I live in Oxfordshire, but Devon is just called Devon. Shire is a county, yeah. Oh, got it. We're learning. You have to learn something new every day, or that's the day the, you shall die. Well, that's good. That's good if you can do that. That, yeah. is a, that, is a, that is my philosophy. If I do not learn something each day before I go to bed, I'm like, okay, God, thank you. Let's take me to heaven. No. <laughs> I learn something new every day. You know, the thing is that God loves giving all of so much and live forever. <laughs> no, I've decided it. God punishes us bad people. And, and Okay, so only the good die young because they're good. They, they they get to go to heaven and have these eternal great greatnesses. The bad out! <laughs> what? I'm good. What you doing? <laughs> I said, take me now! <laughs> the bad people, the people who are bad, who you would think, oh, okay, I'm bad, I'm doing bad on earth, I should be killed. Oh, no, 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 no. They have to sit on earth and stuff. Well, I don't think you can, you know, generalize that much. He and I are yes, right. You can see, uh, you can see some old people are very happy, and I'm sure they're not bad people. And you see some old people are just, you know, inside they're in serious pain, and they're scared about death as well. Oh, I'm dead. I welcome it. Yeah, I'm. Well, I, I, you know, I'm not dreading it. But I'll. I'll stay alive as long as, you know, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> anyway, we don't choose that, do we?
No, we we were having quite a good chat, actually. We were, you know, we were getting deep. You see, I'm all about getting deep. And then I just messed it all up. No. You haven't messed it up. You've just. Yeah, just brought it up to the surface. Yeah. I brought it up to the surface? Yeah. Yeah. What exactly? Well, I'd say we... <laughs> I'd say we were getting sort of deeper into, you know, talk what we were talking about. And then, and then, yeah. That's okay, though. I, I couldn't do that. I, I, it just happened. <laughs> But if if you want to, you know, if you want to go deep, because all this if, what's your name? You on the right. <laughs> oh, um, Abigail. Right. Abigail Frank. So, do you believe you've got a soul, Abigail? Absolutely. And you're gonna live, you're gonna exist forever. No, I, I traded my soul uh, years ago for a nickel of crack. Really. No, um, um, yeah, like, I, I totally do believe that I'm going to live forever. Um, you know, I have very strong spiritual beliefs as far as, um, God, Jesus, the Father, Son, Holy. You know, um, a lot of people think this tattoo, which you can't see, is, a uh, uh, the whole, uh, it, it's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for me. Like, that's what it is for me. Um, let me explain it. Okay. I know what it is. The it's Trinity. It's like Tibetan Trinity. It yeah, the, the, the Catholic but one. It's, the it's, Godhead or something. It's that little clove. Yeah, it's just bullshit, really. Yeah. I'm what? No, no. No, the whole Trinity no, thing. No. The whole Trinity no. thing. Because you're, yeah. you, you're in that camp where you kind of believe every word of the Bible is God's word. Right, and I don't. It's all depictions of people who met him or who were with him. The only part that's actually God's word, from my understanding, is like, and God spoke. And then it's, you know, in quotes or in certain Bibles, it's in red print. So I'm not really sure. And I personally have never read the, uh, so embarrassing, I've never read the Bible from front to back. And I was told that that was, you know, okay, but I was also told by someone recently that um, the best way to, uh, uh, get yourself into the Bible or to become intrigued by the, the written word is to skip around, find a guide and, and whatever you're going through at that moment, whether it be um, you're really grateful and you want to know how to uh, give God praise or if you're um, going through a financial problem, you know what I mean? There were like certain parts Those things, but listen, but listen, the guy had a good point because there was a part about grace and um, forgiveness and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like forgiving yourself and, and so he, you go straight to this point, and then I was like, wow, okay. And I ended up reading the entire, like, book. It was like, <laughs> I don't even remember what book it was. Nevertheless, see, that's, that's better because you can't just pick and choose lessons. You have to have a teaching, which yeah. gives you the background to help you not need these little, but I need to find forgiveness, go to X, Y, Z. Right, right. No, when you but need to, you need to start, it's a starting point. I've never once, I've read the Bible, just like here and there, oh, somebody, you know, it was on Joyce Meyer or something, so right. I would read that little thing, or whatever a preacher or a pastor was, was giving the sermon, whatever his lesson was on, I would read that in church, but I never went to the Bible and said, That's I'm going to read this, and I'm going to try to figure it out for myself. Yeah. I always had, so so this, this man who said, read, you know, any of it, and get yourself intrigued, find a, a way to um, relate, find something that you, yeah, so, you, yeah, that's, you know. I mean, if you did read all of it, you'd just be really confused anyway, because enough as it, is. it does contradict itself quite a lot, and it's been translated. Well, you can't really see me, see me how you were all silver. I know, but you, yeah. <laughs> You're more... We didn't mean to throw you into I all this. Just, like, hey. You're not really into listening, are you? <laughs> but maybe this has just been waiting to happen. And look, we sat here this morning and I'm like, look, I just got finished throwing up. I don't know how I feel. I don't even know what to talk about. And he's like, let's just go with the flow. Okay, we're going to go with the flow and just talk bullshit. And I said, 
we start talking about our spiritual lives. Oh, well, he hasn't it. gone into his yet, but... <laughs> no, you're feeling a bit better, aren't you? Justine? Pardon? You're feeling a bit better, aren't you? I am, and I'm, you know... Take care of <laughs> <laughs> I also told you I had to continue because I felt it was a challenge to. So. Yeah, I mean, do you want to... We can take a pause, if you like, and if you want to speak to I'm... Abigail or... And we could do it another time or later. I mean, so, you know, what do you think? Well, what do you, I, he's, he's asking what do I want to do at the moment, like, because... I'm do here. I want to stop and talk to you for a while? And, well, oh, if we're gonna, I if can we're go. Gonna, I can go because I need a shower and stuff like that. Because if I'm going to make a plan with you, and I was, like, telling you, I don't, I can't, I can't go out the door. I'm ready in... 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You know, and I don't, I don't want to rush out because I'm talking. Okay, <laughs> so I got you. I totally got you. And I didn't realize I was going to continue. No. Okay, because yeah. Because you were, you were welcome, and I'm glad. And if you want yeah. to have a conversation about that, continue. You're well, welcome. let's continue. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel rushed out. Yeah. But if you don't want to be here, don't be here. <laughs> because we're talking about God. Yeah, more or less. Strange and odd and confusing, but yeah. yeah. But we were talking, and then, but you don't, you weren't listening to me, so no. I want to Yeah, I mean, Abigail was talking, and then you said something, and then I was gonna say something, and then I was talking. Abigail starts talking to you, so it's a bit, it's not really, you know, happening. You were more interested in what you looked like than listening to what I was saying. Sorry, I like look. I don't look in yours. So I think it's probably easier. I mean, it's difficult talking over the internet enough. It's probably easier if um, me and Justine speak another time. And we can email and set it up again, Justine. And if you like, next time we can, if you want to record it, we could record it next time. Oh, I don't know. Just, I'd, I'd, I'd like to continue talking where we were, I think. Yeah. I'll talk to you in a, minute, in a little while. But she's going to be upset now because, you know, no. I've said this. And... No, no. no. <laughs> uh. I'll talk to you in a while. It's like we have a saying in England, it's rude to whisper, you know. It's I the way... So. She did barge in a bit, but you know, is she your best mate or something? No. <laughs> She's a lost soul. You know, we all we all learn different things in um different ways in a different order. Like she said, she likes to learn something every day. So that's good. It's good, but you know, she seems quite happy in her life. She's not. Well, she puts on a, you know, a good strong front. She needs so much work, I don't even know how to start. She can't even have an intellectual conversation because she's so self conscious and she's so defensive and she's so frightened. What the fuck did you do? Well, that's the thing. It's not down to you to solve her problems. Like, again, she is a child of God. God will look after her. God will sort her out. There's none going to be left behind. We're all in this together. I know that. But she could just have the one moment of genuine, genuine. She, yeah, but she will have that moment one day, maybe soon. It's going to take... You know, God will intervene in her life in some way and it will happen. She'll get it. And then she'll know. As it is, I'm um, in a position of becoming somebody else's helper and I don't get attached to them, but I do have an attachment to her. And, uh, you know, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to take them where they need to go, but I can't do that. My car's disabled, so I'm not going to go put myself into risk. 
and then they're going to take advantage, and then I'm going to get angry, bitter, and then, then I'm going to lash out. It's not that I'm not a giver. No, I well, am. If you can but see it through, if, if you can see it through like that, then the most loving thing to do right now, because the most loving thing to do is always the best thing, the most loving thing to do will be to stand your ground and say, no, I'm just I mean, going to sit I'm here and chill. Yeah. Aloof. Yeah. But if she were to have opened up about God and I could see her spiritual situation, then that would determine <laughs> to me well, what kind of a friendship, what kind of aloofness there could be. Yeah, but people have a fear about God. People who believe, you know, like her Godhead triangle thing. Doesn't believe in it. That's just what she's told. Right, yeah. So, yeah, so exactly. So she, you know, she just doesn't believe in God, probably. That's probably the truth. And it's too embarrassed to say it. Yeah. Honesty. But most people don't. Most people don't, though, these days. Well, more and more, I think, are coming back. To God, definitely. You, I have written things. My writings are on the internet, but they're, they're okay. just stuff. <laughs> but okay, don't believe in God. There is a state of mind, and you must experience it. In yeah. a state of mind that is, there is no God. It is a place, but you know you can't stop there. You can't stop there. That is not a place. That is a barrier. There's a there's a there's definitely a ceiling when you're there. But you can you can go beyond. You come to awareness, awareness, awareness. The awareness of there is no God. You can be there, but that is not the end of that understanding, because who knows? There's no God. You've experienced it, and then it all comes back. It is a place, and the atheists get as far as, there's no God, and their logic takes them there, or logic doesn't follow their experience, but, etc. truth is truth, it comes back around because you have had to understand it, there's consciousness. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can probably stay there for thousands of years. And you'll never grow. But you'll never get above a certain point, which is why I said there's a ceiling in that place and there's the same ceiling you know for um someone who believes the wrong thing about god like was it lucifer he believes that he's god and that you're god and everyone's god you know that's the kind of there's a similar restriction if that's the belief too Have you? And I have been thwarted and attacked and destructed and I'm having a good conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I shall get better. Sorry, Neil. Yeah. Do you out? Do you drink alcohol? No. Because they're not good for your kidneys. That's why I asked. I'll tell you what killed them: McDonald's, oh, yeah. Waffle with extra hot espresso. Yeah, I noticed when I was in America. Gosh, it's so hard to find healthy food. Yeah. And and it's. Exp really expensive, you know. You go into a supermarket, and you've got, you know, so three apples is like five dollars, but then, you know, on the other shelf, you've got this massive bag of things lovely to eat for a couple of dollars. It's, yeah, it's wrong. I would, when I was there, I wouldn't be able to afford to to eat like I eat here. I go to the farm shop here, and I get all the fruit and veg and stuff and. 
have some great meals and it's quite cheap I I've been pretty disobedient this year I, I was supposed to have been studying um, survival and, and bushcrafting techniques for most of the year but I've got myself really sidetracked on the end time stuff and the politics and the end, the new world order and the end of the world and everything's an illusion. Yeah, you know? it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it, 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 it's quite the thing. It, it gets a, it's a demon. So I haven't been. I've been trying to buy supplies. I've been trying to do push-ups. I told myself that I was going to have a six-pack abs for my forty-fourth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've got things to do, but I just imagine I would rather die anyway. Well, you know? yeah, I haven't prepared. I mean, I did at one point buy some, you know, food that lasts a long time, whatever. And it went bad. Well, I don't know. It's still in the cupboard somewhere, you know. But I'm not, you know, God, it, it's just been going on and on and on. And I think... I mean, you may have you watched my videos, I think, like Brexit, you heard of Brexit? Yeah, that's all we hear, well, especially with my YouTube rounds. <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, I think that was almost like the pole shift, it's like a shift in people, and it's going to, and the tsunamis is the, you know, people in other countries are going to be doing it, other countries will leave Europe, and, you know, because I, I think, like, globalisation... Just it sounds like it's people want to go back to the way it was. Yeah. Nationalism. Well I'm just all for that. In a sense we've been we've been if you think we've been over history, you know, cities have been getting bigger, nations have been getting bigger, we've got more and more globe globally going on, but it didn't quite get there and that Brexit was if you like the change. The now we're going back. And and you know, in a sense, the ideal way to live would be in communities so that are self-sufficient. That yeah. and it's perfectly okay if these communities <clears throat> want to be racially bound. It's fine. It's natural. Well, however they happen, they happen. I don't see. How do they happen? I mean, I I don't see why. You know, there's a problem with the the different skin colors of different races i mean we're all human we all got that eternal soul right we're all a child of god we're all the expression of what if <laughs> what if i was black and lived in the desert and had to make my entire culture around a goat okay there it is it's beautiful it's fucking sacred yeah, I mean, a simple life is a joyful life. I love a simple life. I like it. <laughs> yeah. And nature needs to nature needs to take back control. You know, we've been fighting against nature. I'm not connected to nature. Not really. Are you in a city? Uh, Suburb. It is a city, but it's not big or anything. It's a it's a country city. Right. So um, you got, you got farmland around you. No, there's there's highway around me. <laughs> Just highway. What and scrub? Whatever. I live in the slums, so the 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 the, the, the whole the, the soul around me is bad. But hey. Yeah, the poor people are good people. Their souls, <laughs> their souls. Well, we're all good. We're all good at the core. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this town, this town, this town is something. But their beliefs affect you. You know, being around them, what they believe affects you too. You walk past someone. Hey, I'm, I'm neutral. I'm, I'm cool with everybody. I kind of. What I hate about living where I live is that I have to, I get, I can't talk to anybody. 
I mean, I can't have a friendship. Because they believe something different. Because they believe? Um, I don't know if believe is the, is the complete enough word. Right. They exist with different motives than I have. Well, yeah. Yeah, so they, well, yeah, I mean, different people about, like, lots of people just want to be busy all the time doing something, don't they? They're always busy, um, they're, they, they have to have their dramas, they, yeah, yeah. It, uh, he's a spiritual person, and nobody asks questions, nobody's aware of their surroundings, I can't even talk politics, I can't even talk religion, mm. because all they do is drink and fuck, I can't even talk personality or or any kind of subject that requires an education. No. I don't know what to talk about. So I exist by just equating with their very common emotion of moment. <laughs> oh well. So I can see through them faster and see all the way and I'm like, God, God <laughs> Start talking to God. <laughs> oh, we talk every night. I'm fully convinced that I'm the bride of Christ and we're going to be together any day now. <laughs> Shit. She's like, I'm still a virgin. I don't know. <laughs> Do you I feel like a virgin. I feel like the virgin. The seven virgins with the lamps, with the oil. Boy, this time I have enough oil to share and nobody wants it. <laughs> You know, I think a lot of people. See me. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people feel like that, and I, I did too. And the thing is, I think it's because we can see, we could see the world going downhill. Right. We knew there must be something better, and we've had an idea which is an improvement, if you like, on what they do at the Come moment. All right. <clears throat> yeah, and then, of course, we're going to want to try and improve things, but I think it's better to just. Put faith in God that God is gonna do it, and and everything that you do, you know, is part of God's plan too. <coughs> it's all good, really, because the world could blow up tomorrow, completely, couldn't it? Be annihilated, but we'd we'd still have our eternal existence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Cold. <laughs> I'd say we, we go, we go like uh, five more minutes. So if we say, then that's an hour and a half. That seems like a good length. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what kind of thing you would mean or intend to do with reporting. Well, I was just going to put it up on YouTube. I mean, if you've seen a few of my videos, you've seen what I'm claiming. I will have to watch your videos, and in light of having talked with you, then I wouldn't be so quickly to assume or anything because <laughs> I didn't I had like I said I didn't really make any personal opinion on you what I felt intrigued by was you wanting to talk like I'm like cool somebody who believes they're the Christ you know with all sarcasm intended wants to have a conversation wants to be asked these questions that you're not allowed to ask the sacred it who is avoided you know <laughs> yeah then perhaps he's using it. I don't know. Perhaps what? Perhaps this? I never go into that. Well, I wouldn't right? lie. I wouldn't want to lie because I know that's bad, and I want to. I'm all about truth. 
And this is, you know, and I've got here through feeling in my heart. And I have had the realization. I actually had an experience where I was with two thieves that I was crucified. But I didn't make anything of it. I, I feel like, I feel like when you try to say it and claim it, I don't know. What is that? That's probably wrong. It's probably the beginning of ego. Is it the beginning of error? He thought it not robbery to whatever. I don't know. And there's something that sticks in my face, in my craw. I've had an experience. But just as I've experienced there is no God, maybe what is Christ happening? And that, that experience changed into Christ is I am every man. Christ was able to be every man on his on his crucifixion because I felt that I felt the experience of every fucking person in the world experiencing. Well, what did they experience? The fact that they also died or something. It's something weird. Okay, what do you do with that? Is that what you had? No, I'd say no. What I've been having is pure pure feeling. So if you go from the premise that you can feel the truth, because when I first watched A.J. Miller and he's saying, you know, God is male and female and I'm feeling this truth. So then I start to build on that and I'm and I'm sort of, you know, feeling what's next, if you like, you know, just someone help me by saying, you know, go into ignorance. You kind of you go into a point where you feel like you know nothing and something comes to you. And so I felt I was definitely feeling God. And then I got this feeling that God's like saying, you know, you. <laughs> and I've had this, you know, back when I was 19, I had this sort of, I, I said to a friend of mine once, I said, I worry that I'm Jesus. And he just said, it's a sin to worry. And I thought, okay, that sounds fair enough. I won't think about it anymore. And then, so here I was in my life, you know, 20 years later or whatever, and it's come back again, if you like. And but this time, I feel like I've, you know, I've got the tools. I can work with something here. If I can feel truth, I can I can go on this journey, if you like. And it's been it's been two years now. But I wouldn't say I didn't embrace me, and I don't use the word Jesus anymore. And I've, you know, I had to sort of think to myself, well, what is Christ? What is the Messiah? And, you know, and and <clears throat> obviously go into it and ask all the questions and through the feeling of is this truth, find, find, find my way. And that's basically I've been making my videos, sharing each, if you like, every time I feel like making a video because I feel I've uncovered, realized something. So I've done that. And that's how, you know, I was sitting there and suddenly, you know, it's like the thought popped into my head that I was Enoch. And mm. suddenly this massive feeling came to me. Ezekiel. Pardon? You're Ezekiel. I had that. I'm Ezekiel. I pray for the people. I intercede for the people. I pray for the people. I for the people. I intercede on their behalf. <laughs> I act out his judgment. <laughs> <laughs> And if anybody would walk up on my hut, <laughs> what the fuck would they see? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's who I felt I was. I always wanted to be Ezekiel. I thought I was. he was my hero. But when I started feeling coming to a new knowledge and shit, that's why I got to stay away from the Bible. Yeah. I always identified. I really identified with him. <laughs> Well, go with it, you know, but just, yeah, go with the feelings that, you know, the heart, I realise this as well, the heart doesn't lie. And it's in a song I wrote yeah. most recently. The heart doesn't lie. If you want the truth, it's in, it's in your heart. God wouldn't, you know, it's like when, like when you're feeling things in your heart here in the middle, that's your core, that's you. And there's a, you know, the Holy Spirit is like the truth. 
If you feel it, go with it. The only thing I'd say is that you're female, so wouldn't you be the wife of Ezekiel? Wives, but, but they never <laughs> but they never named the wives, did they? They never named the women in the Bible. So how would you identify with Ezekiel's soulmate, if you like? Like how could I imagine be well because there's no male or female in the spirit, if I could have been a male, I could have been a male. There is male and female in the spirit. I feel I, I feel Mother God differently well i feel mother's god's love enter me differently than father god's love yes and that's, that's the thing my consciousness could have been born in a male body like maybe well i see what you're saying that ezekiel i would be saying ezekiel's spirit inside of his body was a female if it was me yeah is that what you mean? Yeah. My that's well, your soul is one anyway. So you and your soulmate are one. You are one. And if you were Ezekiel back then, you would have been a soulmate then. And that probably more in those days, people were more likely with their soulmate. I think these days most people aren't. Because we look for partners for different reasons. I don't understand. Um, we have floor... Love. Do you avoid fluoride? I try to. Do you use toothpaste? Occasionally. And I, I, I do use some mouthwash because it's got hydrogen peroxide in it. Okay. I got bad teeth. And if they take me away to the FEMA camp, I got to get my feelings before we go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually mourn for, the, mourn for the POWs and I mourn for the ones who died in... World War Two and stuff because they did have they had bad teeth and you know it wasn't the tortures that killed them it was their teeth. You look you look we you know we don't need to do anything with our teeth really. If we ate good foods we wouldn't have to uh, we wouldn't have to brush our teeth. Do you know what scientists really put a thumb their nose to God? They should genetically engineer us to have a second set of adult teeth. That would be the most brilliant thing we can do, just put a little bit of shark DNA <laughs> in us so that we can replace our teeth one more time. It's all we need. I wouldn't eat GMO food. I certainly wouldn't want to be GMO. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, you can do it for good. Look at the villages, you know, in Africa, the Maasai, you know, they've got perfectly good teeth. Do you see them with a toothbrush? No, but they probably use herbs and stuff. Well, they just eat the right foods. Just being natural. I can't believe. Anyway, are you going to think about what's that Ezekiel thing? Are you feeling that that's been in in part of your life for a long time? Um, well, I guess it was a while ago. Around the 2001 is when all this awakening started happening. Okay. Yeah. And since then. When I'd gone back to church from like 203 to 6, I would really study the, um, I started studying the prophets a lot more. Because I've been a Christian off and on my whole life. Um, the first time I was a Christian, I focused on Jesus and I focused on his teachings like like a student, like a, like, a, like a Buddha. I mean, I'd always identified with the oriental mindset. So I, I took his teachings as teachings, guidelines, and it really puzzled me that the people around me didn't. Mm. I didn't know what they were worshipping. They weren't following Jesus. Uh, I started to get alienated from the church after a while, but I was a good student. God, I knew my Hebrew, I knew my Greek, I knew my theology. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started to study other religions, and I went way back into Egyptian mythology before time. I pretend worshipped when I was 12. Yeah. I pretend worshipped Ma'at and Toth. And I learned hieroglyphics and I really wanted to be an Egyptologist. <laughs> my mom squashed my dreams. And you know what's so sad? It's so sad. As dedicated as I was, if I'd have gone and followed that dream, been an Egyptologist, I would have been there when they found Queen Hephaneptia. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been there. Oh, all the famous things I would have seen <laughs> if I'd only followed my living dream. 
But I, I think if you follow the God path, you will end up thinking that you're glad that that didn't happen. I'm always glad. <laughs> You'll be glad that things turned out exactly the way they are. Every now and again, I realize that I've had a very, very wonderful, perfect life. But I, <laughs> but every now and again, quite often, I have to be slapped with, don't say you hate yourself. I hate myself. I hate my life. Yeah. I hate me, you know. No, you've got but to say, you've got to love yourself. You've got to. I feel like a failure on so many levels. And but you're not. Because look, you know, there aren't, you know, there aren't many people that make those choices to seek the truth, you know, to put that as a priority over other things, and there aren't that many. So you will be glad that you made those choices. I know. I never want to come back. When was the last time you had a break from the weed, like more than a few days? Oh, no. Uh, last November or something, two Septembers ago. <laughs> okay, know. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, at some point, do it again, because firstly, your dreams come back proper vivid. You really learn things from your dreams. And when you then have a spliff, you're going to get proper high. Oh, yeah. And if you've got the truth inside of you, you're going to go right to God, and you can. Every single interaction becomes a thought with God. Every single... No, you'll really know. You'll, you'll just feel it's not a thought. There's no thoughts in it. It's just, just the feeling that you're, you're real mum and dad of your eternal soul. When you feel them, you're going to be so glad that you made these choices. But anyway, that's up to you, and it's your path, and you'll take it, and you'll go on it. But that, you know, I, I'd say that would be a good thing to do. Yeah, I'm due a break soon. <laughs> I had a three-week break um, back at the end of July, and I hadn't really had a, much more than a couple of days' break for the for about a yeah about a whole year the year right. bef bef the year before that I'd been pretty good and I was about 10 days off 5 days on 10 days you know like that and I was every time I, what was making me want to go off was the coming back on bit I was getting so high having not done it that I was really making I was really f making the connections really learning ah uh, well it's different oh it's different it, like I told you when I have that wonderful place of experience I can't I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> I mean I read minds quite frequently <laughs> yeah good is that strange to say those things because I just never say those things because I'm afraid of saying those things yeah and but I do believe that I'm reading minds sometimes no I believe you are and I think the fact that you've since a young age, you've kept these what people would call imaginary friends, but are actually spirits. You know, you 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 yeah, you've kept their people. They're just people. people. Yeah, I'm free to one. <laughs> and and you've kept this connection open. I mean that that is on the mind reading sort of scale, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You can get scared, and what if it's a big bad demon lying to you? <clears throat> when you die, your uh, spirit slave being sucked on forever. Because you got to admit, there's a vampiric relationship going on between us. But there is a bit, yeah. But okay, so you can have these, you know, negative beliefs, and then feel if that's true. That's how you do it. But the, because, like I said, the truth is marvellous, you know, and so each time we're learning a truth, it feels more and more marvellous. 
That's just the fact. But most people believe it's not marvellous. But that's why we're changing. That's why we're moving up. It's happening. You believe that there's something happening that's changing the way it is? I think it's always been happening. It's always God's plan has always been an action. But I think first stage of the plan is this 6,000 years. God made the world in six days. You could say each day is a thousand years. In a sense, what God's plan is, what he's done in the last 6,000 years, has been the introduction for our eternal souls to eternal life. And stage two is coming up. Oh, well, I think we've already, we're already oh. at the beginning of stage a two. A lot of my life, the, fa the um, fantasy world I created as a child, Yeah. a lot of its mythology it has to do with reformation, being taught a better way, being forced to learn a better way. Um, and when I started trying to write the stories, of my you know, fantasies, uh, I would always imagine that at some point in time, Earth became unstable, and the people from this other realm that I, that I always wrote about had to invade. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I know maybe culturally I warped a second coming story into my ideas, but basically the mythology of these people was a change in morality, a, a, a a justice, justice, you know, <laughs> yeah. understanding, you know, and over time, of course, I changed. Now I, I find myself battling greatly. What purpose does violence serve? No purpose. I used to believe in violence, you know, uh, whatever. And it's a deeply ingrained in humanity. And when we get angry, we want to do violence. And when we want to stop stupid people, we have to do violence. So there must be honor to violence, therefore we have samurais, okay? <laughs> therefore you can, you can admire the poetry of violent justice, can you? I don't know, I'm still questioning this. This is why because, you reach to God and, you know, God, if God, God is all loving. World. Yeah, but God, okay, I'll get on to that. God is all loving, so the loving... A loving response is always going to have the best outcome. And Jesus said, love your enemy, right, as well. So, God made, God made the universe and our souls with rules. So we're not being punished by God, but when we do something wrong, we get to feel that that is not good. And obviously, then we're not going to want to keep doing it over and over again. We're going to want to do something that's good. And that's, we learn by our mistakes. We learn by our mistakes. I, I got back and realised at a young age I was almost, you know, being nasty to my little brother. And I realised the mistake of choosing not to love. You know, I could have chosen to have been really nice to him. And, but I made a wrong choice. I made a mistake. But without having made that mistake... I would never have felt the, the, the impact of it. And that's why we needed to have this shit at the beginning so that we feel what happens when we go the wrong way. Yep. Because everything is made of love. I mean, love is, the, you know, those four letters. It just means so much. There's, there's always going to be something to learn about it. Love begets love, right? If you want to receive love, you put love out because you'll get love back. <laughs> I don't know how the hell this woman. She'll never level with. Who's this? That girl. Oh yeah, no, you can't talk to her about it. It's the same with most of my friends, you know. I don't actually, you know, I don't really actually see many people anymore because I know if I'm around them, again, like, I know what they're believing, I feel it, it comes, it comes across to me. So I don't sweat it, you know. There's a friend of mine visiting 
who she usually sees me on a Tuesday. She'll be coming around later probably. And last week I said, let's do an experiment. Right, you don't talk for 20 minutes. Well, she couldn't commit to 20, so then we agreed 10. She managed about four. But there were a couple of minutes where, you know, it was nice. She was just, you know, being her, like, if you like. And I could actually feel her, and and it was nice. But then, you know, she's allowed to talk again. It's just blah, 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 blah. And goes down, you know, the, the frequencies go down. <laughs> Do want to understand more from your perspective. I think you're interesting. Kind of like it. You're all right. Okay, thanks. I'd like, I'd like to do less talking next time. Less talking? What? Just well, we can feel any time. I've already felt you anyway. After, after the comments, I could feel you. You felt nice. It was a bit sexual. I'm sorry. Um, this is not an intention. Uh, the night that I made the comment and I felt myself being observed, I usually turn on music and interact with the energy that's looking at me so that, um, I don't know, so that I have control of it. I dance. I dance. <laughs> so it may seem like it was sexual, but I was dancing the energies. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think there's anything majorly wrong with it, but... I allowed it for a couple of days and I kind of went with it and um, but because I know my soulmate, I know who she is, I can connect with her, it, I felt it was, it was hurting me to, to do it, I felt the hurt of it, it was, it was, it was, it was, Basically, I was allowing the sexual aspect of it, whereas you, whereas usually I should say, no, come on, you, you know, we're, you are my sister, I, and then I, and then I might feel feel it come into my heart rather than my sexual organs. Can I say that? <laughs> I hate that. I'm actually quite celibate. Yeah, but I'm actually quite ignorant as well. Yeah, but you've got to be truthful with yourself. Like, I think... I know, and the energy. You know, when, when you go to sleep at night, you might not be remembering your dreams, but it's quite likely that you're not celibate in your sleep state. Uh, but I felt it in my spiritual Well, that's okay, you know, consenting adults are allowed, it's God has created this sexual aspect, mainly because the sexual aspect will be stronger with your soulmate than anyone else. But you and I actually have, it's quite strong between you and me, we're almost quite close. And I think that's why someone, why, uh, a spirit, kind of put you to me as well. well I, I don't know. Physically, I have no attraction toward men at all, and I have been traumatized. I have no receivability from men. I always feel predated upon, and I cannot handle that any. And I've never had the experience of a woman that is loved, but that's where I want to go. I want love from a woman, I don't want to love a woman. But I don't even know for sure if that's exactly what I really want, I just want love. But, yeah. no, I'm not looking for it. Right, you, no, right. you want love. And I certainly don't <clears throat> experience a lot of attractions. I mean, you know, I worry that you've got to the stage where you hate all men. Yeah. Because you hate 50% of the population. Hey, 39%. What about, what about McCullen? My father figure. I love men. I love 
the intellect of men. I love the guidance and the strength and the maturity. I love all the good things of mankind. But that's not what happens in a relationship with a man. That's not what happens in a relationship that's built on fantasies and lies and control and manipulation. There's no such thing. No, it should be equal and freedom, and nobody believes in that. They think that the other one's there to serve them. No, we're here to look after each other. I am sorry that I'm so emotional. No, it's good. Don't be but sorry. I'm kind of convinced that it will never be... that I will always be alone. No, you won't. Because my test, I think, of my soulmate person will be that person that I can let my spirit through me and express my worship. Like, if I can worship God and have a meditation in front of or with, oh God, ha, the holiness of with, then that would be my person. But if my spirit can't come into me and I can't worship, and I'm a strange person, I have strange habits, I have strange thoughts, and I go through depression. So, who, who is normal can accept that? <laughs> who wants normal? I, I guess I don't really want to be alone forever, do I? <laughs> you know, just think about the now, I would. Yeah, that's what I do. God. Gee, I suppress so much. <laughs> no, I mean, but, like, in a sense, though... It's good to allow whatever comes and emotions is good because afterwards you feel better. Yeah, of course. I wouldn't call suppression that I let it express itself. Where we make our errors when we attach to all the negative feelings that come well, with it. Well, the problem is you s saying that you don't think you'll ever have someone, you know, and that thought, that belief is false. And therefore it hurts. But I can't let it go. So it's wrong. I know. And the unique so, so keep go. so keep going into it. Keep keep feeling the emotion until it's complete. And then you'll have a realization that no, I'm not alone. I've always got God. Yes, I can go through that or I can realize that. One thing about all these stinking old religion things is that they want to take you into a traumatic feeling. For what purpose? What does it give them? They always do it. I go through my traumas. Yeah. And I pray. Yeah. And I feel safe with her, with my goddess, whatever, my spirit friend. But I just don't know if I can have that with a real person. As I understand, what I've got is an imagination. You can have it with God. God wants it with you. Everything that I have, I have. And if it's not with God, then I'm sorry. He missed the boat because I've been for him my whole life. <laughs> so if what I'm having is not with God, okay, I quit. Because <laughs> okay. I've been a seeker. <laughs> no, well, there you go then. You've got it. I do. You've got it. But it does hurt. All right. Well, uh, well, uh, what should we say in about, I don't know, a couple of weeks? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. I've enjoyed this. This has been fun. <laughs> Till next time, then. <laughs>